Interval and Inequality Notation Review. All right, so this video is building up to our next video where we're going to talk about domain and finding domain um, of functions. Let's review interval and inequality notation. All right, that was a <laughs> bad inequality symbol to start this with. This right here is the less than symbol. It's the less than symbol. Uh, so for instance, two is less than five, less than symbol. If we put a little line underneath, it means less than or equal to. Or equal to. So for instance, I could say, I could still say two is less than or equal to five because two is less than five, but I could also say five is less than or equal to five. Essentially this or equal to portion makes it so that you can use the number itself. So five is equal to five. It functions as an equal sign. This right here is a greater than sign. So I could say that seven is greater than three. And then greater than or equal to Same idea as the less than. We could say we could say that uh, seven is greater than or equal to three, but we could also say three is greater than or equal to three because three is equal to three. With any of these inequalities, we can flip them around and rewrite them if necessary. So, for instance, if I needed to rewrite two is uh, is less than five with a greater than sign. I could write this as five is greater than two. When I'm rewriting an inequality like this, when I'm switching their sides, the thing I like to keep in mind is that the big side should stay towards the same number and the small side should stay towards the same number. Or you could think of it as it should keep pointing to the same number. So if it's pointing to two, when you rewrite it with the five on the left, it should still point to two. If I wanted to rewrite this one right here, I would rewrite this, here's three and seven. I would keep it pointed towards the three. And we can rewrite any of those inequalities. So all of those that I used up there, those use uh, just numbers, no variables at all. But when we're looking at inequalities, we're gonna be seeing X's. And we're gonna be asked to change this, these inequalities involving X's into intervals. So for instance, x is greater than four. A statement like this, x is greater than four, means that we're talking about all numbers greater than four. All greater, all, all numbers greater than four. On a number line, on a number line, the way that this would play out is you would highlight all the numbers greater than four. So I, I rarely do this like tick mark thing on my number lines. Typically when I'm doing my number lines, I just mark the number I'm interested in, uh, but I'll mark, I'll mark these numbers this time. Negative infinity is down here. Positive infinity is up here. This is just a number line. And we are marking all the numbers greater than four. So these right here, just kind of highlighting them, all the numbers greater than four. But we need to be able to indicate here that we're not including four itself. Right? There's no underline here. We're talking about all numbers strictly greater than four. And the way that we indicate that is by using an open circle. Right? When we exclude a value, we use an open circle. Open circles mean exclude this value. So if it's a less than sign or a greater than sign, 
we're using open circles. If we wanted to include the value, for instance, if we had x is less than or equal to negative one, and we wanted to draw that number line, just gonna mark negative one right here. All numbers less than or equal to negative one. So here are all the numbers less than negative one. And to show that I'm including negative one, I'm going to use a closed circle. Closed circle means we are including that number. Again, negative infinities down here, positive infinities up here. So this is the number line representation of this inter of this uh, inequality. The interval notation is going to use this information and write it as an interval. So we're starting at four. We are starting at four and we're going to infinity. We are not including four. So the way we write it, we use parentheses to indicate we're not including four. So four, and it goes all the way to infinity. So you can really read it off of here. You can read it off of here, kind of like this. Like if there was a parenthesis here, and then parenthesis on this infinity. So from four to infinity, you can choose any number between four and infinity, and it will lie in this interval. We read these from left to right. So on this interval down here, I would be going from negative infinity all the way up to negative one. And because I am including negative one, I'm using a bracket. So we use brackets when we include the value. That's the big idea. I'm gonna write down just kind of a cheat sheet to all those things that we just that we just said. Uh, and I'm also going to tell you what's going on with these infinities and do they get brackets ever or is it always parentheses? What's going on with infinity? So if you are including endpoints, if you are including endpoints, In interval notation, that means you're using one of these guys with an or equal to. On a number line, it means that you're using a closed circle. And in interval notation, you're gonna be using brackets. All of those things mean that you are including the endpoint. If you are excluding the endpoints, that's going to be for the strictly less than or the strictly greater than signs. We use open circles on the number line. and parentheses in interval notation. Negative infinity and infinity will always get parentheses. So when we're talking about negative infinity, it's always gonna look like this. You're never gonna see bracket negative infinity. You're never gonna see that. You're also never gonna see 
uh, negative infinity with a parenthesis like this. Negative infinity, if it's used, is always going to be the leftmost point, right? Because negative infinity is the as left as you can get on the number line. And then positive infinity is always going to be the furthest to the right that you can get on a number line. So when you use positive infinity, you'll be using a parenthesis like this. You would never be doing um, a bracket or having a parenthesis on the uh, left of it because you never start at infinity and move forward. So all of these intervals up here, these two intervals up here, they are, it, it's read from left to right. We start at four, we go to positive infinity. For this one, we start at negative infinity, we go to negative one. It would not be the same to say negative one comma negative infinity. In fact, this doesn't make sense. We can't go from negative one to negative infinity. That's that's moving in the backwards direction and our intervals are always in the forward direction. So let's, uh, let's do some practice here. On this worksheet, I have the inequality notation, the English translation, and we're gonna do number line graphs and interval notation. Um, with the number line graphs, I have two different lines here. And that's because there's two different ways that you can draw number lines. So I'll just do both. Again, if you have underlines, that's going to re uh, relate to closed circles, which is brackets, no underline, open circle, parentheses. So here, x is less than or equal to two. So the English translation is we're looking for numbers less than or equal to two. Okay, and I have to scroll down here and see what decision I made. Okay, circles on the top. <clears throat> All right, so for this one, I'm gonna mark two on both my number lines. We have an underline here. So we're using a closed circle. closed circle, and it's numbers less than two. So less is going to be to the left. Those are all the numbers less than two. Now, ooh, oh no, my Apple Pencil is dying. Let's see if we can make it last for the rest of this video. <laughs> the other way you can write this, because our closed circles are the same thing as brackets, we can draw it like this instead. So I can put the bracket here instead of the closed circle. And it makes it a little bit easier when we go to write our interval notation because we know negative infinity is down here. And if we simply put a parenthesis on that negative infinity, then we have the interval right there. The interval goes from negative infinity to two. You can read it still off of this version. It's just a lot easier to translate into interval notation when you have it written this way. Let's do another one. X is greater than negative five. So this is numbers greater than negative five. I'm gonna plot negative five on both of these. We don't have an underline, so we are gonna be excluding negative five itself. I can put open an open circle here. And then numbers greater than it. So greater than five, negative five is gonna to be to the left. Numbers greater are to the left. For this bottom line, instead of an open circle, I'm going to do a parenthesis and shade to the left. Did I say to the left? If I said to the left, I meant to the right. I just don't know my left and right at all. In interval notation, we start at negative five and we go to infinity. So parenthesis, negative five to infinity. Infinities are always getting parentheses. I'm always reading it from the left to the right. And then the numbers are getting parentheses or brackets based upon whether we included or excluded the endpoint. This right here is what we call a compound inequality. So this is 
telling us a range of numbers essentially. So this is the range of numbers that are greater than or equal to negative one, but less than seven. Okay. All the X values between negative one, including negative one and seven, excluding seven. So I'm gonna mark both of those numbers on my number line. For negative one, we are including it, right? That is a closed circle because we're including it. And here, less than seven, we are excluding seven. So we're doing an open circle on seven. When you see a compound inequality like this, a sandwiched inequality, think sandwiching on the number line, right? A sandwiched inequality is sandwiched interval. So it's gonna be this portion right between the two numbers. Right in here are the numbers that are greater than negative one, but less than seven. Using our other type of number line, I would use a bracket for the closed circle. I would use a parenthesis for the seven. And then it's the in-between area. And when you do it this way, it's really easy to read it off. So this is bracket negative one to seven parenthesis. Negative 10 is greater than X. This means numbers less than negative 10. It doesn't look like it when we read it this way though. We're really used to seeing X on the left and I like to rewrite things like this so that X is on the left. So I know that we were pointing to the X over here, which means when we rewrite it, we are gonna be pointing to the X again. So we have X is less than negative 10. Negative 10 negative 10. There's no underline, so we're using an open circle. And then less than negative 10. Less than is to the left. Open circles relate to parentheses. So one other way we could write this, we could use a parenthesis here, and we're shading in that same area. This interval right here starts at negative infinity and it goes up till negative 10. Here is another compound inequality. You'll notice that the arrows are pointing to the right, whereas these ones they're pointing to the left. Um, what's nice when we have the compound inequalities where those where they're facing the left like that is that these are in order, right? Negative one, then the numbers we're interested in, then seven, right? Negative one is less than seven. Here, when they're written with the inequalities facing the right, this is backwards from how we would think about it, right? Nine is greater than two. We would rather read it the other way around. So we can rewrite this. We can put the two here, X, and then the nine. We just have to be really careful. This part right here between the X and the two is pointed to the two. There's no underline. That part between the X and the two. For this one right here, it is a underlined one, so an included one. So between the nine and the X, it should be pointed to the X and there should be an underline. So this is numbers greater than two, less than nine, including nine, excluding two. So let me mark two and nine on my number line. We are excluding two, so open circle, but nine is included. It has an underline on the nine, so we are including nine, closed circle. And then it's a sandwich, so we're taking the in-between. We're taking the in-between. Make those purple.
for this bottom one, open circles, that's a parenthesis. Closed circle is a bracket. And then we're taking this middle portion here. As an interval, this is the interval from two to nine. Negative infinity to infinity, this is all real numbers. This is, this is everything. Um, it's this entire line. Everything there from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. So it really just looks, I mean, as if you're putting parentheses on those guys, negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. Last one down here, this is also a type of compound inequality, um, but it's an or statement here. So let's, let's be careful with these ones. We have x is less than negative four. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna plot negative four and five because I know those are the numbers we're working with. Negative four, five. And then x is less than negative four. So this is numbers less than negative four or greater than, this should also say greater than or equal to five. So I'm doing an open circle on negative four and it says less than negative four. So I am shading less than negative four. Or greater than or equal to five. So closed circle on five and greater than five. Negative infinity, positive infinity, negative infinity, positive infinity. As an interval, if you have a gap in the middle like these ones do, we use union symbols to connect the two pieces together. So essentially you have, you have, uh, maybe I'll do it on the bottom one. This first part from negative infinity to negative four. And then this is the union symbol. Which means we are putting two intervals together. And then this portion here is from five to infinity. So five with a bracket to infinity. And that would be how we wrote right this number line in uh, interval notation. So I have a few more examples that go um, kind of in the other direction where we have number line graphs and intervals and we're going to uh, fill in the blanks here. So starting here with this negative five to three, that's in interval notation on the number line, negative five, three, negative five, three. This means from negative five to three. So this whole middle portion is the area we're talking about. Parenthesis is gonna be an open circle. So it'll be a parenthesis on, on this bottom graph, but other times we use open circle. And then brackets are closed circles. As an interval, this is a compound inequality. So it's negative five is on one end, no underline because we are excluding negative five. Negative five is less than X and then less than or equal to, we have a bracket three. You know, maybe I'll write this portion in color.
Okay. For this next one, up until negative eight, there's an open circle on negative eight. Let's go ahead and put negative eight down here. When we're drawing this with our parentheses bracket notation, we still really do need to draw that open circle. But what we can do is we can add some parentheses around it to show what's really happening here. So this number line is including every single thing, right, from negative infinity all the way up to infinity. It includes every number except for negative eight. Negative eight has been plucked out of the number line. So it's like we have all of that and all of this. We just don't have negative eight. As an interval, as an interval, we could read it off directly from left to right. So we're going from negative infinity to negative eight. We are skipping negative eight. So we're gonna put a union symbol there, skipping negative eight, and then starting at negative eight and going to infinity. And man, eights and infinities look funny together. Um, I should have chosen a different number for that one. It's fine. Um, so this right here, we go up till negative eight, and then we begin at negative eight. But we're not included. Neg neg we're not including negative eight because there are parentheses on both of these. As an inequality, this would be the inequality x less than negative eight or x greater than negative eight. For this next one, we are using the numbers zero and eight. Again, I probably should have not used eight, but it's too late now. I'm not gonna go back and change it. We have zero and eight. This is a lot easier for us to do on the bottom line first. So on the zero, we have a parenthesis, right? And then negative infinity to zero. So Negative infinity to zero is this range right here. And then eight has a bracket. And then we go from eight to infinity. With circles, the way that this would look would be an open circle on zero and a closed circle on eight. This portion right here is x less than zero. This portion over here is x greater than or equal to eight. All right, so taking this number line and converting it into our open and closed circle number line and then an inequality and an interval, brackets translate into oh, to closed circles. Okay. Brackets tra translate into closed circles and parentheses translate into open circles. And then we are taking everything in between. We can easily read off the inequality or the interval from right here. This is from one, the bracket, up to 12 with a parenthesis. We're including one, we're sandwiching X, we're not including 12. Again, this bracket right here corresponds to this symbol. And this parenthesis right here corresponds to this one. All right, just a few, just a few more. 
Here from negative infinity to seven, we just need to mark one number here. Seven has a bracket, so we're gonna use a closed circle and a bracket down here on this one. And then it's from negative infinity to seven. So from negative infinity all the way up to seven. What we've shaded here are the numbers that are less than or equal to seven. So this is X less than or equal to seven. Okay, this next one's a little mean, um, <laughs> but we're gonna do it. Um, we're not gonna do this portion. Get rid of that portion. <laughs> All right, how do we write this portion here? How do we do this? We have negative infinity down here, positive infinity up here, and there's portions of it, and that's what we're gonna focus on here. So this first portion right here, this first portion, there's a closed circle on negative two, so we're doing a bracket. So that first bit goes from negative infinity up to negative two with a bracket. And then there's an open area, so we're gonna do a union symbol. If there's a gap at all, we do a union symbol. We start back up at three where there's a closed circle. So I'm doing a bracket. It goes all the way to five and we are excluding five. So the parenthesis on five, excluding it. So this interval goes from three to five, bracket on the three, parenthesis on the five union. And all we do is we skip five here. So we'll just start back up again right after the five and go all the way off to infinity. So parenthesis five to infinity and beyond. And there it is. That's our interval. All right. Now this last one looks really easy in comparison. So negative two. This is from negative two to positive infinity. Negative two has a parenthesis on it, which means we are an open circle. And then from negative into to infinity. So that's all of this, okay. negative two to infinity. That'd be the same as having parentheses. Reading this number line, these are numbers greater than negative two. So this is X greater than negative two. And uh, that is that. So um, hopefully this helps a bit with inequalities and your understanding of them and how the number lines translate. Being able to read a number line graph appropriately is a really important skill. You'll use it a lot um, in reading domains, just in math in general. So hopefully it was useful. That's all for now. See you in another video. Bye.